Okay, hi everyone. Welcome back to Beyond Stardust. Today I have a guest, Judith Newman, with me today. She is a spiritual guide, and we are here just to have a conversation and talk about um, her journey and her work and her advice that she has for you. So I'm looking forward to having this conversation, and I really hope that you guys enjoy. So hi, Judith. Hi, Karina. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. Um, so let's just start with hearing your story from the, you know, when you first started spiritual seeking to um, where you are now. Okay, well, that goes back a fair while now. <laughs> okay. Um, so... I suppose in the late 90s, I was stressed and I needed something to relax me and to, so I um, started yoga. I started doing a yoga class and very soon the teacher, and it just appeared in my space, really. I was walking down the street to work and there was this sign saying yoga upstairs and I thought, I need to do that. <laughs> and so I progressed to that and then eventually well, not long after the teacher said, I'm training some students. I want you guys to take over because I'm not going to be here for long. And he was a little Indian man. He was a lovely man. And so he called, pulled me aside and said, you'd be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, my gosh, really? <laughs> so anyway, I did it. And through the process of, of um, doing the uh, teacher training there was a um, priest a brahmacharya hindu priest who used to come in on the weekends to give us a lecture on the uh, bhagavad gita and he said uh, i'm taking a group of students up to the himalayan mountains would you like to come and he said be good for you and i thought why is everybody singling me out <laughs> <laughs> um so on the other side, my life was falling apart <laughs> and everything. Yeah. But on this side, everything was actually falling together. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that at the time, but I just went. So I went along with whatever came into my space. So I went up to the Himalayan mountains and, oh, my gosh, that was a journey and a half. <laughs> Brought up so much emotional stuff. And um, that was great. So came back, started teaching life progressed and um, many things happened over the years and um, here I am today I was, also, <laughs> I was also painting at the time so you know I was I recognized that I was painting my journey uh, I went from a, I went from a realist painter to what I thought was was really weird but what I was actually painting was my own journey, turned mm. out to be. Yeah. So, yeah. And Lovely. then I, I, actually, I saw David on, um, David Bingham on one of the other programs. And um, I said, I recognize what he's saying. So I called him up and I said, I recognize what you were saying because he was talking about art and self realization. Mm hmm. And I got it. I said, I'm there. I've, I've already done that. And so when I spoke to him, he said, you've already done it. I said, oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> because it's not like you've, you've said before. I've heard you say this before. It's not like a big event. It's like yeah. it, it just happens. It's just a progression of, of growth, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's something that tripped me up for a while too. I was like, well, you know, I haven't had a big event, so there must be something else. And then it just, yeah, it was just annoying. Um, yeah. So do you remember before hearing David Bingham, do you remember when things kind of shifted for you in how you saw our beingness or our reality or the way that our reality works like you kind of remember where that shift started to happen um i think i was always 
in that space. I found it very difficult to be in um, the physical reality, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. I literally, I found it quite difficult to be with other people my whole life. Um, I was very happy to be in my own little world <laughs> of creativity and creating all sorts of things, gardens and houses and paintings and food. And I just, to me, that's, that's it. That's my life. It has always been my life. Um, very right brain. The left brain stuff was like, why are we even doing that? I couldn't figure out why we had to do that stuff yeah but um yeah so so it's very much I was always there kind of thing but I had to learn how to be here as well I was like mm -hmm. but I don't want to learn how to be here <laughs> <laughs> yeah I feel like a lot of people can relate to that but they don't understand why they feel that way and mm. I think that leads to a lot of people's seeking as well because they feel out of place or they feel like they're not home and that gets them on different journeys of seeking yes yes yeah I think um, I think that's the catch actually is the seeking is the is oh I don't want to say it's it's the downfall but it's actually when you're not seeking it it appears yeah yeah you know because it's always there anyway yeah. <laughs> um, the the video where you first saw David Bingham, was it the one on Conscious TV when he was talking about art and our true nature? Yes, that's the one. I, yeah, I like that. I, I really liked that one because when he was describing that one painting of um, it was like the of the observer through the observer's yeah. eyes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it um, definitely something really clicked for me there in that one. And yeah, I remember yeah. on our first call telling him that. Yeah, I actually had a similar um, occurrence when I was at art school. Um, I went back to, to um, do a fine arts degree in um, 2010. Uh, yeah, 2010, I think it was. And um, I really enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd been painting, you know, 20 years before, but I wanted to explore all these other avenues of creativity, printmaking and all the, the rest of things. And I saw a clip of Agnes Martin speaking in an interview. And Agnes Martin's an American artist who lived in New Mexico, I think it was. And she's since passed, um, not, lot, not long ago, in the 80s, I think. And... Um, her paintings were very simple and, he, and um, I recognized it as pure innocence because the lines in her painting and then she'd paint pale blue lines or whatever color, but they were all really pale colors and she'd have a gap in, in between. So they were like gaps of nothing. And to me, that was the silence in between mm. or the stillness in between. That's where our true nature is, in between all the noise or distraction, if you want, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And at the time, when I saw it, I didn't think of it that way, but it resonated with me. I thought, I get that, and I get what she's saying. And yeah. <laughs> for me, it was like, that's so similar to what David, I suppose, in a different way. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you got invited to teach yoga and you got invited to go to the Himalayas, you said that your life was kind of falling apart around you, but then, it, but then this was coming together. Um, was there a moment where, you know, that, that just peace and acceptance set in, you know, um, the realization that there is really nothing that you, that you have to do or fix? <laughs> Um, that didn't settle in for quite a while mm -hmm. because um, for me, um, because it was the end of my marriage and that, you know, there was a lot of emotional stuff, mm -hmm. you know, so I had to resolve the emotional body, the mental body, the spiritual body was coming on board, clearly, mm -hmm. 
So it was all of these that had to be resolved. And um, like with anyone, you know, and um, I suppose people of my age have a lot of ancestral stuff to, mm -hmm. to resolve because we yes. kind of went along, I suppose, in a long time ago and kind of there was nothing around and no one around to guide us in this way you know as to what was actually happening with us because I wasn't seeking realization at all I didn't know anything about that you know I wasn't seeking that certainly and so to um to recognize what was actually happening with me it took a long time and um, to balance myself out and to come to this place of complete peace mm -hmm. and stability it's taken a while yeah well and you then well in my case you start to see all the past lives which are not past they're all happening in the mm -hmm. moment and you see why and you recognize and you start to understand what you've been doing the whole time actually of being here yeah so it's really interesting really in the end it becomes really interesting but when it's happening it's not so good yeah so do you do you believe that um you know from the perspective that you're at now do you believe that the healing work or the bringing awareness to like you said the ancestral stuff the past quote unquote past life stuff um the deep like subconscious stuff that that has a place still like that that's work that is important for people to do um i would say that um i would say it comes up when it needs to and to just recognize it i wouldn't mm -hmm. work on it because i find that the more you work on something you're actually keeping it going mm -hmm. that's my um experience and um because <laughs> yeah um it's not because that's all part of mind that's the mind mental body so when we recognize that you know what it actually is then we realize that it was all just a story and it's a mental story and if you keep that mental story of jude or karina or whoever if you keep that story going well you're actually keeping it going you're not going anywhere you're not resolving it you're actually reinforcing it mm -hmm. as as that being your identity and it's not yeah um so allowing it as it as it unfolds as it comes up allowing it just it to um come into awareness and and yeah, recognizing it yeah. to observe it, to allow it to come up and to observe it and that's where i find i have a special meditation that i use with people where i show them that they're the ones observing they're the ones actually witnessing what is actually going on what's coming up and what's going on and you don't follow it you simply observe it you know mm -hmm. that the following and the keeping the story going and running off with the whatever the thought is that popped in or emotion or whatever that's the character yeah that is not your true nature that's your character your true nature is observing everything and allowing everything to come up and dissolve so because i you know i found the same thing to be true but um just for the audience as well so would you say that it sounds to me like maybe you're saying that um yeah as you observe it like you said it dissolves as you deserve as you observe it as you allow it without resistance that's when it's able to that's when those layers of the illusion are able to fall away finally yeah that's it yeah that's it exactly yeah without resisting um, yeah so would you say that um you know the the work that you did in the himalayas the work that you did when you were learning yoga <laughs> would you say that it was um 
that it did have a place that did have a a oh. an effect on on your life oh definitely definitely i mean everybody has a different way of coming to this you know um mm -hmm. mine was through the yogic process but mm -hmm. everybody has a different different way of of um coming to it and um you know so whatever it, i think it comes to you mm -hmm. You know, it comes to you. It, it um, the path actually finds you. It, um, it's not about going to seek it mm -hmm. out, because, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's really interesting to hear the di different stories from different people. You know how some people weren't even on any type of spiritual path, and they just had this instant sudden realization and then other people who have been um seeking since they were very very young but yeah it's everybody's story is different but it all leads them to the same place right <laughs> yeah i wasn't seeking when i went to do um yoga and meditation i wasn't mm -hmm. actually a seeker i just yeah. thought oh that'd be interesting to do because i'm a bit stressed and I'd like to be focused and um, off I went on a different <laughs> and here I am. Yeah. So it's a yeah. fascinating thing, this life. Yes. And would you say that, how would you describe your, your current unfolding of your life? You said that there's an immense amount of peace in your life. Um, maybe if you could just talk about that a lot a little bit because I know that um I know for myself and I know from what I've heard from others that there's also this idea of like well once you have self-realization or whatever you however you want to call it um everything's just great everything's just perfect <laughs> and it is but at the same time like life still unfolds right yeah yeah um I wouldn't say everything is great everything's perfect Yes, it is. It is perfect in the unfoldment, perfect in the imperfections as well. Mm -hmm. So you, you you tend to see things from a completely different perspective. Yeah. That's the best way to put it, I suppose. Um, all the judgments are gone and um, the critic is gone and the emotional term turmoil is gone or turbulence is gone mm -hmm. you notice what comes up and it's is just for whoa there's a new unfoldment and a new unfoldment so it becomes an excite exciting ride then you know mm -hmm. and um you're not at the mercy of external forces coming at you you are the one actually creating the changes and shifts within you, you you begin to recognize that and so from that perspective there's a huge sense of freedom yeah that perspective you know um it's a massive perspective shift but it comes i feel it comes after the balancing of the the bodies the the four lower bodies mm -hmm three lower bodies and then your spiritual body so it comes after all those are balanced and then you open up so much more do you mind just going a little bit deeper into that but about the lower bodies and um balancing them well it's the um the physical body mm -hmm. um you are not this physical body you start to you recognize that you're not just this physical body then your emotional body all the emotions are resolved which takes a long time mm -hmm. um you're no longer at the mercy of anything coming to you because suddenly and and also then the mental body because so those are the three then you've got your astral body which is your spiritual or your spiritual body which um you start to understand everything, everything opens up and you start to understand how all of these work and how the emotions and you feel everything. So when you feel energies coming at you or you mm. feel them in your space, 
you are now the center, you know who you are, you are the I am, which is the center. Mm -hmm. And you can be still in that center and watch everything just pass through you. It, it no longer has um, a catch, you know, it does, no longer grabs, there's nothing to grab. Mm -hmm. So you can feel it just pass through you. That's when you know that um, you've sort of resolved all of that. And mm. um, it takes a while for that to actually happen. So it's like to just be aware of that and not to be harsh, hard on yourself or anything. It doesn't happen just like that. Yeah. You know, so to balance those three lower bodies, would you go back to what you said about just allowing just observing what's coming up observing. yeah observing mm -hmm. observe and breathe observe your breath mm -hmm. that that's who you really are and um that you are you are the observer of all of mm -hmm. this and you have a body but you are not the body yeah and with that knowing and with that understanding you can then see all of these things that come up and they get resolved much quicker. Yeah. Yeah. That's so um, that's interesting that you said that because one of the things that I had been struggling with was the realization of what our true nature is but then still not having that balance and still having yeah. these things come up. And there was that expectation of, oh, well, once I know, once I, once I have, I do, I'm doing air quotes for people listening. And once you have self-realization, and I say that because like, we already are that, right? Um, it's not something we become or something that like, it's just, it's what we already are. But I had this idea of like, once you recognize who we are, all of a sudden, all of that just poof goes away. And I was still dealing with things coming up mm -hmm. in the physical, uh, mostly the mental and emotional. So that's mm -hmm. interesting that you said that. So um, would you say, um, well, one question I did want to ask you is, is meditation. I know that there's some non-dual teachers who are like, you don't need to, you don't need to meditate. You don't need to do anything. Would you recommend meditation as a way to, like you said, observing, observing your breath, observing what's coming up, balance those three lower bodies. Um, is, is that something you'd still recommend? Well, meditation becomes a, a natural practice, a natural way mm -hmm. of being. Really. Yeah. It's not a separate thing that you do. Um, it becomes, um, you know, you could be meditating while doing the dishes, you know, that's a meditation mm -hmm. in itself. It's like you're present with whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, that's meditation, really. The yeah. word, the word meditation has this connotation where you have to sit cross-legged on the floor and, you know, hold your fingers in the mudra and, no, it's not that. That's okay to begin with, <laughs> mm -hmm. I suppose. But um, you don't need it after a while. It's just everything is a practice. You know, walking, going for a walk in the park or in, in nature is a meditation. Mm -hmm. Everything is. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, for people who are living um, in a way that, their mind is just racing and going and going and it's a constant like reaction to the outside you know stimuli mm -hmm. um so even just going for a walk they're like thinking about their bills that they have to pay later and what happened earlier at the coffee shop and their kids or whatever um would you say that that's a great a great place where traditional meditation can come in and help yeah, because meditation is to bring you back to the present moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you have, when the, the mind is always going to, back to the past or the future, 
Mm-hmm. And that's, where, you know, the past is regrets or stuff that you have to do or whatever, you know, all of that. And the future is worry about or stress and, and all of that about what am I going to do? It's like, you're not even, no, you're not there. You're here yeah. in this moment. So yeah. that's, that's basically what meditation is to bring yeah. you back to this present moment is where your true nature is. Yeah. It's not in the past and it's not in the future. Past yeah. is gone. Future hasn't even happened. Right. So in meditation, that's the concept. The meditation is for bringing us back to the present moment and recognizing that this is who you really are. Now, yeah. in this moment, that's all there is. Yeah. So yeah. For that reason, you know, if somebody is stressed and can't sort of regulate their emotions and that then yes it is probably good to have that go to a meditation class but um, and there are a lot of people who are stressed at the moment Mm -hmm. but um yeah use it for that (laughs) (laughs) so um currently from um you know the way that your life is at, at this moment um do things like stress and worry come up for you? Not at the moment. I've, I've noticed I'm very relaxed. Mm-hmm. The people around me are a little um, nervous about how I live, uh-huh. but it's actually not bothering me. It's, it's um, the guidance comes from within to take the next step and the next mm-hmm. And that's what I listen to. And um, so I, I like being on my own and being, I've actually stopped painting, which is, which is quite interesting. Um, for a while now, I've stopped. I thought, oh, everything's gone now. What am I doing now? <laughs> but, but it's, um, they were all part of, different identities that we take on and we kind of live out so that's what I meant by different lives all happening in the same moment Mm -hmm. so I was able to see that oh that was a lifetime that I lived oh that's good been Mm -hmm. there done that on to the next what's the next (laughs) and so it's quite interesting it's the it's it becomes very interesting and you don't hold on to anything Mm -hmm. it's actually you don't hang on to anything yeah it becomes quite quite fascinating (laughs) yeah fascinating it's fun it's really joyful experience you know I had some very enjoyable experiences traveling and 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 all of that they all just unfolded I hadn't planned them Mm -hmm. they just unfolded so yeah it was great and the, the way that things unfold is it is it I mean is it it's is it in a way where things that manifest into your life they're just it's going to be supportive it's going to be you know anchored in love and freedom and joy and peace versus yes mm-hmm. yes it's it's um whatever now looking back at it now it's whatever caught my interest at the time Mm -hmm. you know and I was really interested in really interested in doing yoga and I really loved it and Mm -hmm. I was also painting at the same time so I'd rush off from my yoga class to my painting class and I'd just relax and just get right into the painting Mm -hmm. so both were going concurrently and um so the yoga actually took me on this wonderful path of going I would never have thought of trekking the Himalayas it was like what (laughs) and um it was just fascinating and um and also the art just took me in a whole another direction and so each time as I um then somebody came in and said hey you should do I'm doing the um fine arts degree and you should do it you know you'd really like it and I thought yeah I probably would I always wanted to do that <laughs> and I went on that journey and um, 
really enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed it. And as of, while I was doing that, I had someone come in, my cousin, a cousin of mine, said, hey, Jude, I'm going to Paris and, and um, to see the, the galleries and all of that. And I thought, oh, I always wanted to do that. He said, why don't you come with me? And I thought, mm, maybe I could. <laughs> and before long, off I went on that journey. Yeah. And, you know, went and finally went to the Louvre and, and all these wonderful galleries in Amsterdam and, and Spain and all of that. And it was so amazing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, so life just takes you. Yeah. If you don't, if you're not controlling it, you're just living joyfully. You're living your joy, not worrying about what somebody else is living. You're living your joy. You're not looking for what can I get or mm -hmm. what can I take. You're actually just living your joy. Mm -hmm. It unfolds. It just yeah. unfolds. And, and you have to be willing to, to sort of go with it. Mm -hmm. And as you go with it, you know, it just, you have so many, because we're here to have experience. That's what I yeah. feel. We're mm -hmm. in a physical body. We have a physical um, body as consciousness appearing as a physical body. Um, consciousness wants to express, uh, experience itself. Yeah. So the more experiences we have, the more joy it is. Yeah. That joy is consciousness. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. enjoying itself or, or having its another experience. And, you know, and it's not from a place of any judgment, even um, a difficult experience from the physic, from the human perspective, mm -hmm. is seen as wisdom. You know, it's, it's brought to wisdom. Yeah through that and you see that it was all perfect it was perfect <laughs> um what about challenges that appear in your reality how do you address those and do they is your perception of the challenges different these days yes that's what i meant um okay you see it as something that is not a challenge anymore, but as okay. okay what is what's this experience mm. um, okay that I need to wisdomize or whatever? Yeah. And yeah, so you go, you look at it from a completely different perspective, and there's no challenge or whatever. It's just simply more growth. You look mm -hmm. at it from that perspective, and um, yeah, it's it so, becomes different then. Yeah, like a. Uh, like a almost a curiosity like hmm this is <laughs> this yeah. is this is fascinating <laughs> yes what's this going to show me or teach me or release perhaps even me from yeah. from a stuck um, mind perhaps yeah i love the way that you're describing this because uh there's an important underlying current of all of it all and it's that surrender it's that just a, you know um trusting your joy trusting following the the things that are, do embody those feelings of love peace and joy and and all of that and just allowing yourself to continue to follow that as it appears in your reality yes if it's joyful you know, like, so um, have a joyous experience. And if it feels right in your body, go for it. You know? Yeah. But you also have the wisdom of the human mm -hmm. to, to know and understand what feels right and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So if it is something that doesn't feel right, you just go, mm, thank you, but no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, would you, I was going to ask a question and I, I completely went away, but um, what was it? Oh yeah. So, so, so there's the surrender aspect to it. Is there any time, do you, is that just fully how you live life or are there any moments where you set maybe a goal for yourself or something that you decide, you know, you decide, oh, I want to achieve or experience this particular thing? No. 
No, it actually, I'll tell you, I'll give you one example. Um, mm -hmm. When I was painting and um, everything was suddenly happening for me, you know, exhibitions and this and that, and people would come in and say, hey, do you want to do this? And, oh, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And, mm -hmm. you know, go into a collective exhibition with them or whatever. And one night when I was just as I was dozing off to sleep, a thought popped in or I don't know whether it was a it wasn't a thought. It was a knowing just came mm -hmm. up because I wasn't thinking anything and knowing came up. Wouldn't it be nice to have a, an exhibition in New York and, mm -hmm. you know, in a big gallery in New York, something like it wasn't as long as I'm expressing it now yeah. it's just like it was there yeah. and, and I went oh that's really weird and off I went to sleep but I actually in that moment when it popped in mm -hmm. I saw myself in a gallery in with these big paintings mm -hmm. and all these people and off I went to sleep and the next morning I wake up and there was an email from a gallery in New York Mm. and I couldn't believe my eyes yeah <laughs> but it was um so it was one of those things where if it's right it finds you mm -hmm. so the human isn't the doer yeah if you like the human the human, the physical or the human is actually doing the painting or whatever. Mm -hmm. You sit until it, it arrives. Because mm -hmm. being an artist is the ultimate surrender. Yeah. Really. You literally have to surrender until it shows up, unless you're painting something that you can see. Mm -hmm. That's different. But this way, it's like torture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you literally have to surrender everything until it shows mm -hmm. and and then when it does you move and once it's complete it's like wow it, it's I, the feeling once it's completed and you know that the piece is completed is a feeling that I cannot explain I can't put into words because it's almost like it's like giving birth, I suppose. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, finally. <it's> it. Yeah. <laughs> finally. Yeah. Until then, it's like torture. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, it doesn't take nine months. But um, it, um, it's quite funny. In, in so much of life is replicates nature. So much of this journey back to yourself replicates nature and and the process of everything. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we all come back home to the original, the one, which is everything. Mm, yeah. You know, it, it's connected with everything. It, it is the source of everything. Mm -hmm. So you see, I mean, it's phenomenal when you see it from this perspective afterwards <laughs> when you <laughs> finally stabilize and everything you see from this and you go oh my gosh mm -hmm. you know everything is connected it is all and it is all from me yeah one of, each one of us yeah um you mentioned that when this knowing came to you about the gallery in New York that you, you specifically said it was a knowing not necessarily a thought um that that's another interesting thing do would from your experience would you say that um that you know your thoughts aren't this like your thoughts aren't running the same or they or 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 that you can hold just the being without the thoughts with ease mm. yeah it's um there's no thoughts anymore um, okay there's just a knowing comes up mm -hmm. and you know you know you notice the difference even if a thought mm -hmm. does come you know yeah. you can tell the difference mm -hmm. um, but generally 
No. It's a, it's a clear, it's a, it's different to a thought. It's like, whoosh, mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's like a breath. It's almost like, mm -hmm. and very short. And it's not in words. You yeah. Know thought, you know how thoughts might come in a big long sentence or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Parable. <laughs> <Or> whatever. <laughs> The whole chapter sometimes <laughs> but, uh, so you know hey that's not it go away and, yeah. <laughs> but this is like a breath it's almost like a and the whole thing is contained in that it's almost like a you get the sense of of it as opposed mm -hmm. to the sentence <laughs> yeah you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah and from like your normal day today, though you, um, it's interesting to me because I know people like Eckhart Tolle talk about, Tolle talk about like how um, they just don't have the, did you, they just don't have the, all of the mind junk, the thoughts. So um it's just a state of being then most of the time instead of instead of narr instead of a narrative <laughs> that's what can happen yeah. yeah there's no narrative mm -hmm. um i know i have things to do mm -hmm. you know there are certain things to do and if there's something that i've forgotten it'll come to me mm -hmm. it'll remind me i get reminded mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. not by email or text <laughs> it reminds yeah. um and I had to laugh because um, yesterday I was speaking to someone and I was just chuckling to myself and to them with them mm -hmm. um, about being in, in this world, but not of it. So it's like I'm in this not of it world and yet I'm still here. And so I had a, um, something to do with someone and um, the messages, because they are so much in the 3D reality of emails and texts and mm. blah, 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 blah. And instant, everything is instantaneous. They want instant replies and responses. <laughs> and it's like, okay. <laughs> and I just burst out laughing because I had, uh, apparently I had an email waiting for me to have a look and it was only there like five minutes or something. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Can you please reply? <laughs> it's only five minutes since you sent it. I just burst out laughing. I thought, I get it. You know, I get that it's a whole nother world, a whole nother reality. Mm -hmm. It literally is. It just, for me, that's indication as to how far from that I, you know, I actually am because. Mm -hmm. um, that's a whole nother reality that I don't even recognize anymore. Yeah. Um, and yet, you know, it's still there. Mm -hmm. And there's so much more interesting stuff. <laughs> yeah. So much more interesting stuff to do and to, to, you know, go into your almost what, I suppose what that reality would call dreams. Mm-hmm are real for here they're they're more real mm -hmm. yeah and we can i can walk in that reality mm -hmm. whereas where i was where i used to be mm -hmm. and what that is if you understand what i'm saying i think you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. from there it's like you're dreaming mm -hmm. but from here mm -hmm. It's not a dream. I'm actually walking in it. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. It, so I noticed that there's a, you know, a person, a friend um, who's still not where I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not a higher or lower. That's not it yeah. at all. No yeah. higher or lower. It is like you're going deeper. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a deepening of who I am. Mm -hmm. And where, whereas they're still walking in linearity, which is birth to death, 
and yeah. everything in between, you know, everyday existence and thinking about the future and mm -hmm. reminiscing about the past. And so that's linearity. Whereas for me, it's like, oh, yeah, I see that. That's there. But there's so much more. There's mm -hmm. so much more. And I'm kind of walking. So for them, it's more like you're dreaming. You've always mm -hmm. been a dreamer. I go, yeah, isn't that fantastic? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love that. It's it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's hard to put it into expanded. words. Yeah, expanded. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, for me, I think of it as like, you said, you know, it's not like a higher or lower. For me, I think of it at, at least the way that I perceived my journey is that like it was a falling away of the you know the illusion falling away of layers of the not self revealing more of what yeah. is real yes yeah so you're going deeper into what mm -hmm. was always there yeah you're taking a, you're taking away all of this crap that we take on from the time from the time we're to when we you know david speaks about that that we take on all this conditioning and all this stuff and ancestral and mm -hmm. collective and mm -hmm. whatever whatever you take all of that off so you're actually going deeper into revealing what's already there and what's there is is so expansive yeah so expansive it's um it's only like a dream from where we were yeah and yet it's real. It's more real than mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, it's like, I'm trying to think of, trying to conceptualize what you're saying, you know, put it into words for people, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's not like this, the time and the space um, falls away. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, because there's no time. Mm -hmm. So in this, you know, when you go deeper into your I am presence or your true nature, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, there's no time. It's mm -hmm. timeless. Mm -hmm. It's timeless. So whereas the other is based in time and that's what I had to chuckle about because it's like oh okay they're working in time mm -hmm. so I can see it and mm -hmm. I'm not disrespectful of that at all because that is mm -hmm. part of physical being yeah you know, there has to be duality in so that we can see what's going on mm -hmm. or see mm -hmm. where we are at and whatever so mm -hmm. duality is part of the physical experience and always will be. Yeah. So it's to learn to navigate through it. Yeah. To balance with it, within it, I suppose. And back to the thing about thoughts, because I, I find it very curious and interesting. Um, would you say that the... the ability to use your thoughts as a tool instead of just having them going on, um, that that came from self-realization or from the balancing of the mind-body? To use your thoughts as a tool. Well, I mean, it, you know, um, we, we use our thoughts as a tool when we communicate here, when I ask you questions mm -hmm. to write the notes versus just having this endless stream of, of, of narrative and thoughts just going mm -hmm. on and on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can go back, you know, you, you're still a functional human, so you can go mm -hmm. back and, and retrieve what, what you need to. Right. When you need to speak or, or to um, write or whatever. But... Um, that's not running the your daily life so to speak mm, yeah it doesn't run your, it doesn't it's not 
part of your daily life you know mm -hmm. you have things that have to be it's hard to explain actually mm -hmm. because you have things that you need to do appointments that you need to keep or whatever so yes the the awareness mm -hmm. is there that that has to be taken care of but it's not like a thought running off into the yeah. you know and would you say that you got to that place with, from the balancing of the mind you were, we were talking about? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that comes with time. I, I mm -hmm. just, it, it came with time for me. And you, you need to feel um, safe in letting go of all of that. Yeah. Um, I noticed that... Um, I allowed a contract, I wasn't going to go there, but I'll touch on that just to, just briefly. But I did allow a contrast um, purely from the place of, I just want to have fun. I wanted, you know, someone to travel with and have fun and mm -hmm. whatever. But it turned out to be the worst thing possible because um, it wasn't for me, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, and it could be for some, but it wasn't for me. It was like, the internal was so much more fascinating. And, you know, when I say internal, you know, going within and mm -hmm. my world was yeah. so much more enriched and fascinating and joyous and all of that than trying to have an external or trying to keep one foot in that external relationship mm -hmm. dynamic thing going. It's like... Mm -hmm. It was, it's like I was past that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know I was past it. <laughs> you know. But then so. that's one of the one of the yeah. challenges that that make that allows you to see it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that um yeah, absolutely right. So that was the gift from mm -hmm. from that whole experience. You know, I can see that wow, I was so already so far beyond that and I hadn't realized that I was. Mm -hmm. So, and it was only after that I spoke to David and he said, you already realized. I said, I thought I was, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, there was all this. And he said, what happened? Did your mind come back? And I said, yeah, it was actually reinforced back. It's like, you haven't done your work. I'm like, yes, I have. <laughs> you know so it was like when you see something that is really not that's pulling you down pulling you mm -hmm. back down into the old mm -hmm. let go of it mm -hmm. you're beyond the old you're past that mm -hmm. you now have to you're moving way beyond that mm -hmm. so okay that's interesting so so there was a time when when a moment where where that came back for you and then you're like oh wait no but i know this isn't yeah and it mm -hmm. i noticed from for me i don't know whether it happens with others but mm -hmm. the moment you're actually shifting into a much higher or let's say deeper they, they call mm -hmm. it higher dimensions but it's a deeper awareness you're shifting into a much more open space or higher way of being um the old will try to Mm -hmm. hold on the old comes in to hold on it's like have you really finished with this <laughs> yes i have <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, yeah i i've 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 definitely found that personally so that's interesting oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well not good in that way but good to hear that you've recognized that so that's great it took a while <laughs> um so if some, so, you know, people who listen to this podcast, they, they are from all different, you know, paths, all different, there's many different reasons that they're here. And there's a lot of people who are curious about self-realization and discovering your true nature. And they, and I know, <laughs> I already kind of know your answer, but just for the sake of this, and they want to know like how, how, how they can get here. You, you said that it just kind of comes to you. It's not something that you can go do. And, and I agree, it's, it's not something you can go do. 
but do you have any advice for people who are seeking self-realization? Well, if they're seeking, then they must be interested. Mm -hmm. You know, there must be interest there. And it's become a lot easier because mm -hmm. there's so many more people awake. So it is already in the field. Mm -hmm. And that's why I find that there's a lot of people actually waking up now. Mm -hmm. um, so, which is beautiful, which is wonderful. And I don't feel they'll have the same difficulties and long journey that we've had. Mm -hmm. But it's still, um, they will come to it. And it's whatever resonates. I always say, take what resonates and leave yeah. the rest. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Doesn't mean that you have to stick with any one teacher or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you take what resonates and you leave the rest. Yeah. That, that's what I would um, say to someone who wants to wake up. And it's like you're already that. You're mm -hmm. already your true nature it's mm -hmm. just a matter of letting go of what no longer serves you because clearly if you're looking for something then there's mm -hmm. something that not, is no longer serving you yeah so to be able to actually see that is i think um, a huge step in the right direction yeah that's a really so, good point that's a really good point that if you're looking for something, that's because, you know, there's something that's not serving you. I've, I've, I've noticed, and from my experience, my person, the Karina story, um, yeah, it was the deep pain, the story of deep pain and suffering that drove that seeking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's um, a lot of people actually come from that place. It's mm -hmm. only when it gets so difficult that you really want, that you're ready to make a change. Mm -hmm. And then you start to seek. Yeah. So, yeah. In my case, it was the same thing. I was so stressed. Mm -hmm. I, I, but I didn't know I was seeking this. <laughs> I didn't know yeah. I was seeking this. But yeah, clearly was. Yeah, but it's so, um, you know, I, I've never really been into like Eastern philosophy or anything like that. And, um, and I too wasn't seeking self realization. I had never even heard of it, like non duality or anything like, or anything like that. And I was doing what I'm doing now, I had this coaching business as a spiritual teacher. Um, and, <laughs> it's just funny that you say like you weren't even looking for it. I wasn't looking for it for sure Th this particular thing but I knew I was looking for something um and it manifested as a desire to learn how to have more like control over my reality and ironically what I ended up finding was that <laughs> like that's not the point at all there is no control of our reality and it's about pure surrender so it's just interesting how, yeah, I wasn't seeking this either. And it, it, what led me to David was I just one day got really fed up with all the different like narratives and stories uh, and the spiritual community of like all these, all these stories that, that are out there. And I'm like, which one's to the truth? <laughs> and then, uh, you know, a series of events that, was not, you know, that just came and unfolded in my reality that just came to me, mm. led me on a path that led me to find David, reach out to him, have a conversation with him. Yeah. So that, that, it's just, yeah. So it's just funny how it ends up finding you sometimes. <laughs> it does. It does. And the, the, the ancient traditions, mm -hmm. had, you know, they had the gold. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's um, it's only through proper training, you know. There's there's a lot of different yogas and, and all of that out there, and they're all fine, you know, for whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you're really truly seeking, you go to the essence of it, you know, to the mm -hmm. study of, of the tradition, and um, and clearly that's what I want was on. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> fell into it. <laughs> yeah. And, um, the the koshas and, and all of those things, you know, the all of the reli religions have a basis of yeah. the truth. They yeah. all have a basis of the truth. There's no one specific, you know, and that has it all because each one of us is a facet. So yeah. you find it within. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can definitely, especially like when it comes to mysticism, like Sufism, um, reading Rumi <laughs> now is is completely different than than reading Rumi back when I studied it in school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You see, yeah, you can see the clear seeing behind it. For behind sure. some of this ancient like work, whether it's poetry or or mm -hmm. philosophical texts or religious stuff. And it's really it um when you look at it now, as you have just said, it's really so simple. Mm -hmm. It's simple. It's mm -hmm. very simple. It is that pure joy and the pure love that bubbles up from inside. Yeah. It actually comes from inside of us. Mm -hmm. And that is that's true, our true nature. And we yeah. go around, yeah. for years, we go around seeking it outside in stuff and things and people and Mm -hmm. whatever's you know but it's all temporary because once you've got it, it it's almost as if the wanting is the aphrodisiac if you like <laughs> mm, okay yeah <laughs> um but it's this pure joy and everything that comes up from within you don't want for anything in that space Mm -hmm. If you recognize, you're not actually wanting anything because that's it. Yeah. That is actually it. Yeah. But it's when you're not in that space that you're wanting. And mm -hmm. um, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with having stuff. There's absolutely nothing wrong in having things. But it's the, I found the wanting was um once you get it it's like okay then you're on to the next thing or whatever mm -hmm. yeah you know it mm -hmm. doesn't bring lasting happiness I, yeah i definitely happiness. agree you know what i'm saying the lasting happiness comes from here inside yeah it's there yeah. making everything yes that's one of the shifts I've made in my teaching is because I call myself a conscious manifestation coach. <laughs> and that's really the big shift from like, when I used to teach manifestation, it was about manifesting all the things and experiences. And now it's about recognizing that the underlying desire behind those things and experiences which is usually peace love joy freedom safety those type of feelings and then finding them discovering them where they are within you the only place mm -hmm. that they are yes and they've always and then, been mm -hmm. and then from there i definitely have found that from there from allowing yourself to 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 allow that those things to move through you that your outer world does start to reflect more of that yes yes There's, you see beauty everywhere you see mm -hmm. beauty in everything and you see love in everything and everyone and you see joy in in just being mm -hmm. alive and um so yeah it's a huge perspective shift mm -hmm. a huge perspective shift and where there used to be fear and you know how will I survive and all of that who's asking how who wants to survive who is it <laughs> why mm -hmm. you know because yeah. you're here and yeah. you will exist even when you're not here <laughs> <laughs> exactly so that survival <laughs> the survival thing is just like 
that's gone out the window. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it just um, becomes a, a moot <laughs> project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm. just like, I don't know, the death of the body is just like, I mean, yeah, losing, just losing a, one of the places that you, like a new, I don't I want, for some reason, I want to say like losing a pair of shoes. <laughs> I don't know. But it, that's what came to me. But, you know, it's just something that, um, just another experience. So yeah, that fear yeah. of. You're going losing. on to, yeah, it, it's like you're going on to more, bigger and better experiences, more mm -hmm. beyond this. Mm -hmm. or you can maybe even get to a point where you take the physical with you and you can appear and disappear or whatever <laughs> you know there's so much more mm -hmm. so much more yeah so, it's been a fascinating conversation <laughs> yes um so okay you talk about some of the stuff I actually was I actually was able to read a two of your blog posts and I really enjoyed them. Um, okay. One was the one about conscious creation and um, and then a more recent one I, you posted, I don't remember the title. So you do have a blog and a website. Um, do you want to talk, just mention what your blog and website are and how people can reach you if they'd like to have a conversation with you or read some of your work? Well, yes, I, um, uh, my website is um, judithnewmanartist.com mm -hmm. and uh, they can reach me on that, you know, if, if anyone wants to have a chat or whatever. Um, I do speak to people, but I love writing because um, as, you know, things I find the energy of what, whatever's going on comes in. Mm -hmm. I kind of write about that and it just flows and, and I just write and hopefully it'll, you know, it'll help someone or yeah. you know, just um, point to something that they needed to hear or whatever. It's all, all uplifting. So um, yeah. that's, that's the main aim of it. Yeah. So, to uplift and to awaken as many people, I suppose. The ones that want to, if they don't want to, that's fine too. Right. <laughs> Always, I always say just take what resonates and leave the rest mm -hmm. yeah yeah um okay well I will definitely leave those links in the show notes so people can reach you easily there they can find it there um and Judith I really enjoyed this conversation I did too thank you for asking yeah. Thank, thank you for coming on. Um, we'll, we'll definitely chat again soon. Um, but in the meantime, thank you so much for being here. And thank you, everyone, for listening. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.